Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm well, how are you? Good. Are you driving home from training or driving to training? I'm actually driving to pick my babies up from school. I'm in Oregon. Oh. Yeah, so um, a couple of days ago was my son's birthday, and I picked him up from school, surprised him, and, you know, I you know went to a Went to get him with uh, all his gifts and all that stuff, so it was really fun and really exciting. And every day for the last three days, I've been picking him up from school. Oh, that is so cool! I bet you're really yeah. stoked about that. Yeah, it is. It is. It's one of my best joys after my my fights. After it's part of victory lane that I love the most. Like having seen having my babies, having seen my fight, and then like going to go get him or surprise him somewhere. And, and, you know, just hanging out with them, talking about stuff. I mean, being a father ain't, ain't, a, ain't a better joy, especially in my in my seat. So I have to imagine, I mean, especially coming off such a big win, an important win for you, then to be able to share it with your family like that, that must be, I mean, that must be the greatest way to start this season, right? Oh, yeah. Um, my, my daughter calls me Mr. Revenge, Daddy Revenge, because, uh, you know, they were there, you know, not in, in, in the audience, but they were there watching the fight in spirit with me, you know, when I lost to Chris Wade that first year. And, you know, you know, my children at that time, in those years, you know, didn't believe daddy could lose or didn't have not seen daddy lose or much of daddy's defeat, you know. So them experiencing that sitting together, you know, when we were off the ride of beating the champion and being beating Bobby Moffitt and, you know, on our way to the championship, you know, stuff like that, you know, so for them to experience that and then it'd be so devastating and then them to experience Brendan Lockney, which they were there at first for in New York, and so them having a couple of defeats under the belt, experiencing it together. And then daddy coming away with a victory against a guy they were a little bit nervous for, you know, I wouldn't say I was, but, you know, definitely talking to my babies, you know, I don't know my father before. So, you know, I could see that they, you know, being daddy, they had a little nervousness on them. But, you know, for us to walk away with that victory in dominating fashion, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I do it for my children. I do it for this. I do it for... You know, I'm I'm a really I'm a real daddy. I, I'm real daddy. You know, I really try to do it for my children. I really, you know, am out there as an example for my children, trying to you know be, you know, the best father and the best man I can be. You know, we always make mistakes, and you know, we know it's perfect. But you know, I really do do a lot of things with with my children at, at, at the heart of my mind. That's amazing. Um, it would would you say that? everything with Chris Wade is kind of settled now do you feel like you can can put that to bed or do you kind of feel like there may still be an option for you guys to kind of to go at it again I, in my heart and in my in my like little victory all that I had for him and my little anger um I, I'm, I'm I'm all empty I got no more hate for him I don't I did grow a natural a natural hate for him over the years and you know, the way he showboated and, you know, the way I felt about, you know, how I, I, how I felt he disrespected, you know, my beliefs and things like that. I, I, I naturally grew a dislike for that man that, you know, it, it turned into a good fuel for me for, you know, motivation over the years. I, I've been on a, uh, uh, on a tear since I've lost to him, you know, other than, the, you know, of course, the defeat to Brandon Lockney. Um, I think it's settled. I think it's dead. Uh, you could say that it's three to three, you know, because he won all three of the first rounds and I won all three of those rounds. But one thing is not like the other. And, um, you know, if there is a way that he comes back and he knocks somebody out or something like that in the next round or uh, and I see him and, you know, we have to fight again. You know, I'm pretty confident in the outcome of, of, of any way that that turns out. Um, I looked at the tape many times since the fight, and, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, I, I, I gave him the PG-13 version of the bad man that night. And um, for all the vitriol and hate that I had, you know, I really did keep my cool in a lot of positions and places where, you know, the, the, the old me would have got got a little bit out of control, a little bit more mad. But yes, I believe that that situation with Chris Wade, 
is dead. It. And I told him that in the third round. I told him, you know, hey, I, I ain't got no more hate for you. There was a time where I'm over his shoulder and I'm whispering in his ear. If you check the tape and I tell him, I, I said, you know, I ain't got no more hate for you. And, I, you know, uh, this is dead on my end. You do what you want. I don't got nothing to say about you. And, and we're, we're done from here. And, and that was me letting him know, like, you know, this is it. We, 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 we can move on this minute. <laughs> Did he res- did he respond to that either in the fight or or maybe later days after? Um, no, no response during the fight, but um, you know, we did have a a, a a hug or like you know a moment after the fight where we like we kind of looked each other in his eyes. There was not many people around, and you know, I had some influences in my ear to say, you know, don't even speak to him. You know, when we're outside, when you're done, just be done with it. But. You know, me, the man in me is still, still, I'm still the bad man. I'm still going to be me 100%. And, you know, we, we had that moment where we looked each other in the eye and we got no more. We, it, it's done. So how soon after that fight do you kind of feel like you've entered another fight camp? Because I know you have a fight coming up. There's not a lot of time, <laughs> but you also want to be able to enjoy yourself. So when do you kind of like put, go back into fight mode? Well, after, you know, being in the PFL for a couple of years, you kind of learn that thin line between celebration and preparation because those lines can blend when you have to turn so quickly around. But, you know, learning the elves and flows, learning how we rocked it out last year, you know, you just kind of do some light things maybe uh, when you get back. I didn't um, incur any injuries, so I just kind of do some light work, some, some – um, running some hot tub sits, you know, some more, some more recovery type aggressive uh, massages and stuff. And you really kind of stay in a mindset of, you know, all right, who won, who lost, you check the tape, you know, you do some mental work on that, you know, you do some things about what you think and you're hungry. You know, a lot of these guys get that victory and that's the biggest thing that they've ever done, not realizing, you know, that's literally a regular season thing. It's not. It's not much. It's a. It's a. It's a great. It's a. It's a good foot forward. But these guys are still lively. The guys that lost it. You know the guys that are fighting. I mean, fights change all the time. I mean, I, so many times in the first season, I was fighting one guy, and it changed or it alternated. And last year, it alternated. And you know, you just got to be ready and stay hungry. And what about this this next opponent? Because you know he was supposed to fight already but he wasn't medically cleared is there any worry that that could happen again because that seemed like a sort of a short notice thing um i'm not gonna lie to you i really do get nervous fighting oh can you see me yeah i can see you yeah um when it comes to the name that i've been given sung ben joe um i am a little nervous when it comes to his ability to um show up to a fight or, or get it clear. Oh, I think I lost you. He wasn't going to be able to fight me. And that's how I found out before anyone else, you know, told me. He told me on the internet. Um, uh, so, you know, seeing him again, I kind of had like a little kind of friendship relationship with him. Hey, you know, I, good luck with everything. Good luck with your fight. And then seeing him at way and then not seeing him at the fight and hearing him fall out. And then now seeing that I have him again, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're fighting and <laughs> everybody's good because, you know, my children eat off this and this is important for me. And, you know, there are a lot of guys that are, didn't, didn't put in that first round work that are seeming to be here in the second round. And that, 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 that's got to make sense to me as well. You know, I, I, I fight every round. I show up the best ability is availability and you can't find a time where I've turned down a fault, a fight, or I, 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 I didn't show up to, to, to be in there for my, for my work. Um, because I've been going through, but I show up to these fights. <laughs> And I, I guess my last question for you, um, you know, what sort of fight are you expecting for him? Hope, you know, assuming he shows up, <laughs> what what sort of fight are you expecting from him? Uh, a gamey one, you know, I believe the the points are going to have to make him, the points are going to state that he's going to have to get a knockout for him to have an advancement and for him to be on this path for what seems like two, maybe three years. 
getting the bad break that happened in uh, April 1st, you know, whatever. I don't know what happened, but whatever happened with that, I, I feel like he's going to come out as far as he's from, you know, Korea, the Korean Falcon. So he's, he's from a place there. Uh, I think he's going to come out guns blazing, trying to knock me out from coming from a far place, coming to Atlanta, having, you know, nothing but a ball back against the wall and, and no choice but to try to knock me out. And him being a taller guy, I'm a, you know, keep my cool, keep my guns hot. And you know how I get down. Whether we got to pull him in the water and drown him or keep him on the sand and, and slow him down, we got to do what we got to do to make it to that playoff. And that's what we're going to do. Awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you have a, a good day with your your kids. No problem. Thank you so much for accepting this this phone call, this interview while I'm on my way to grab my babies. Oh, I'll worry. send you a video of uh, the surprise. It was so awesome. But, yeah, thank you again. Um, I'm down here in sunny. It, well, today it's sunny, but usually it's not. I'm out here in beautiful Oregon for the day. I think I brought the Las Vegas sun with me. And, you know, it's a beautiful day to be around some babies and just relax a little bit. Like you said, how do you stay between those fights? It's, it's, it's filling it up with family and a little bit of joy, a little bit of love right before you go back to that, like, that bad man team style. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yep. All right, Amy. We'll see you. Bye-bye.